greeting stats to 15 students. Um, this video will cover section 4.6 out of the Gabrosic Stevenson textbook. Uh, this follows off our chi-square test that we did in the previous section. Um, and when we do our chi-square test, if we have significance, the only thing that we know is that there is a dependence, that there is a relationship between the two variables. Um, what it doesn't tell us is where differences actually lie. Um, uh, we might want to know if there's a difference between the percentage of all females that take STAT 215 as a senior and the percentage of all males that take STAT 215 as a senior. The chi-square test does not do that for us. It just says, ah, oh, there's a relationship or there's not enough evidence to say there's a relationship um, between these two variables. If we want to specifically know about one of the outputs of our response variable, in this case, we want to know something about seniors, um, we have to do an extra step. And that extra step here is to do a confidence interval for the difference in two population proportions, where we have two distinct populations and we want to talk about the difference between the percentage of everyone from population one that's a success and everyone from population two that's a success. Uh, so some of the notation that we need here specifically for section 4.6, um, we have two distinct populations. You can think of population one as being all females and you can think of population two as being all males. And we want to specifically know something about the percentage of all females and the percentage of all males that take STAT 215 as a senior. Our parameter of interest um, here, P1, again, if our population one is all females, P1 is going to be the percentage of all females that take STAT 215 as a senior. P2 is going to be the percentage of all males that take STAT 215 as a senior. Now, we do not know what these values are. If we knew what they were, we wouldn't have to do a confidence interval. Um, but we don't know. Uh, so we have to look inside of our sample to see what's, what we can say about these values as a whole. I'm just going to let the number with a characteristic uh, be represented by X. Um, so these last three columns here are what we actually see in our sample data. Um, so X1 is going to be the number of female seniors in our sample data. X2 is going to be the number of male seniors in our sample data. Our sample size is just represented by N. So N1 is going to be the total number of females in our data set. N2 is going to be the total number of males in our data set. And then our sample estimate, our best guess for our two population proportions is going to be our sample proportion. Uh, so our best guess for P1 is going to be P1 hat. Our best guess for P2 is going to be P2 hat. And how we calculate P1 hat, how we find a sample proportion in general, it is the number of successes divided by the total sample size. So if we want to find P1 hat, if I want to find the percentage of my sampled females that took my class as a senior, I can take the number of female seniors divided by the total number of females. Same thing for males, I can take the number of male seniors and divide it by the total number of males. Now our parameter of interest, this idea right here, the difference in two population proportions, difference indicates that we're dealing with subtraction. Our two population proportions are P1 and P2. So our parameter of interest, what we are trying to say something about here in our confidence interval, is I'm pretty sure P1 minus P2 is somewhere between two numbers. And uh, so, so that is our parameter of interest. The difference between two population proportions, P1 minus P2. Now to refresh your memory, our overall basic formula for a confidence interval is our sample estimate plus or minus our multiplier times our standard error. That has not changed. How we find each one of these things is a little bit different here in chapter four versus what we did in chapter two or chapter three. Uh, so our sample estimate, our best guess for the difference between two population proportions, if I only have sample data, is the difference between my two sample proportions. Uh, so my sample estimate is just simply P1 hat minus P2 hat. What is the difference between my sample proportion from group one and my sample proportion from group two? Now because we're dealing with multipliers, we are going to use a Z star multiplier. We are using the exact same table we used back in chapter two. 
it is the first table in your packet. Uh, if we're going to do a 95% confidence interval, our Z star multiplier is 1.960. And now our standard error. This pesky guy right here, let's zoom way in on it. This is the hardest math we will do all semester long. At the beginning of the semester, I told you as long as you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, take squares and square roots, that's all the math that we have to do. We have everything except for square roots in here. Um, my suggestion, break it up into as many steps as you need to. If, oops, if you need to figure this out and figure that out separately, jot those numbers down and then add them together and write that number down and then take the square root and write that number down. Break it up into as many steps as you need to. If you're really good with a calculator, you're really good with math, you might be able to punch it all in in one shot. If you're not, just please break it up into as many steps as you have to. Um, yeah, it's hardest math all semester long. Uh, so we can plug these three things in for our overall basic formula to come up with our basic formula for a confidence interval on the difference between two population proportions. And how we calculate that, our confidence interval is P1 hat minus P2 hat. That difference, plus or minus, our Z star multiplier times the square root of P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat over N2. Uh, before I continue, you do have to figure out everything that is underneath the square root first. You can't take the square roots separate and then add them together. Um, we have to add together and then take the square root. Uh, as with any confidence interval or hypothesis testing or any form of statistical inference, we have certain requirements, certain conditions that have to be true in order to say that our confidence interval is valid. First one, randomization, or at least a sample that avoids bias. It's the one that we always need. Now, because we're dealing with proportions, our magic number is 10. We do need at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures, but we need it from both populations. So if we are doing gender versus class standing, if we're trying to see once if there's a difference between the percentage of all females that take STAT 215 as a senior and all males that take STAT 215 as a senior, uh, we would need at least 10 female seniors, at least 10 male seniors, at least 10 female non-seniors, and at least 10 male non-seniors in our data set. We need 10 successes and 10 failures, but we need it from both groups that we're doing the comparing. Uh, so the example that I have here, find a 95% confidence interval for the difference between the percentage of all male STAT 215 students and all female STAT 215 students that are seniors. Um, I'm going to let females be population one here. Um, if you put males as population one, you'll still get pretty much the same results. Um, to the point that I won't mark you wrong if you if you do it the other way. Uh, so X1, X2, N1, and N2, those are all things that we got directly from the two-way table that we dealt with in our chi-square test. Um, so I just plucked those right from there. Uh, P1 hat and P2 hat, we have already calculated these. Um, this is the probability of senior given female this is the probability of senior given male. Uh, those were calculated um, a couple sections ago. Um, so the first six entries here of what we need um, can just be found from the two-way table or a small calculation. This point 0.115 equals 53 divided by 462. The point 0.141 equaled 41 divided by 291. And again, we've done that math already. Now, because I want a 95% confidence interval, my Z star multiplier is 1.960. Maybe you still remember that from earlier. If not, we do have the table that you can find that value on. So I'm not showing a whole lot of the steps here on this video. If you do need help getting from here to here, please let me know and I will make sure that I that I help you. Um, but our confidence interval, 
uh, goes from negative 7.6% to positive 2.3%. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, negative numbers, that shouldn't be possible. We're dealing with proportions here, and I, I know that proportions have to be a number between 0 and 1, and, and you should be, you are correct in at least questioning uh, getting this weird looking number that that shouldn't really be there, at least according to our intuition. However, it is okay to have negative numbers here. And the reason is because of what our confidence interval is actually on. Uh, so I'm 95% confident that blank is between negative 7.6% and positive 2.3%. And I do have the answer right here. But because we are talking about the difference between two things, we can have a negative number. Absolutely. The percentage of females that take this class as a senior has to be a positive number. The percentage of males that take STAT 215 as a senior has to be a positive number. The difference between those two things does not have to be positive, though. Um, for most of you in my classes, if I take your age minus my age, both of those are positive numbers. You can't have a negative age. Uh, but if I take your age minus my age, for most of you, we will end up with a negative number. That's because differences can be negative. Uh, so if I wanted to interpret this confidence interval, I'm 95% confident that the difference between the percentage of all females and all males that take SAT 215 as a senior is between negative 7.6% and 2.3%. Or I'm 95% confident that P1 minus P2 is between negative 7.6% and 2.3%. So the note that I have here, I have attached here, uh, if the confidence interval contains zero, we say that the two populations are not significantly or not statistically different. If the confidence interval does not contain zero, we say that the two populations are significantly or are statistically different. Uh, so if we look back up at our confidence interval here, it does contain zero. And now when I say that it contains zero, I don't mean one of the digits happens to be a zero. The only way that our confidence interval will contain zero is if we go from a negative number to a positive number, which is what we have here. That's the only way that zero will be between the two numbers, if we go from a negative number to a positive number. The reason why zero being in our confidence interval is important, or whether or not it's in the interval is important, because if our confidence interval contains zero, like this one here, what we are saying is it's plausible, it's somewhat likely, that P1 minus P2 equals zero. And if that's the case, then P1 could equal P2, and they're not significantly different. Now, if your entire confidence interval is below zero, or if your entire confidence interval is above zero, um, where zero is not in our confidence interval, you either have two negative numbers or two positive numbers, if zero is not in the confidence interval, then we can be confident that P1 minus P2 is not equal to zero. And there is a significant difference uh, between our two populations. Um, so here, zero is in the confidence interval. There is not a significant difference between the percentage of all STAT 215 males and all STAT 215 females that take my class as a senior. Um, when you take my class, probably not dependent on your gender. Um, I'm not saying that the percentages are equal, but what I am saying is there's not enough evidence to suggest that they are different, which follows through very well with our chi-square test, where we said that gender and class standing, eh, not enough evidence to say that they are dependent when you take my class, probably not very much dependent on whether you are a male or a female. Uh, so that is section 4.6 out of the Gabrosic-Stevenson textbook.